Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial and in this video we're looking at the exists predicate. So exists works with a subquery, it is two valued logic, something can either exist or not, and it returns true or false depending on whether an empty set or a non-empty set is returned. We're going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll go through some examples of that and hopefully this will become a lot clearer. I'm in SQL Server Management Studio now and I'm just going to show a very quick example of exists at a very high level. Um, so this is not practical, this is not something you'd use within a work environment. Um, but I'm just going to demonstrate the basic syntax of exists. So if we say select, we'll just say select one where exists, so exists is part of the where clause. Uh, and then we're just going to add in here a subquery of select one. So this is a very simple query. We're just going to select one where exists. Uh, within our subquery. So our subquery just returns the value 1. So our subquery does return a result. So if we go ahead and execute that, now we get a result because something does exist. It's actually true. And if we change that to select null, again, a value exists. So we do get a true value. Um, so that is the basic of exists. Very simple syntax there. And again, that's not practical in a real world environment. We'll never write a query like that. So now let's move on to some more practical examples. So I have here a um, simple, some simple tables that I'm creating and inserting some values into. Um, so I'm just creating the tables uh, T1 and T2, they're just going to have a single column that's set to tiny int that can be nullable, um, and you'll see why that's that's key shortly. So we're just going to create those two tables. Into table one, I'm just inserting the values one, two, and three, and into table two, I'm inserting the values one, two, and null. So if we go ahead and execute this, this is just going to return the results of both tables. Uh, I'll just turn off the execution plan for now. So we can see in table 1 we've got the values 1, 2 and 3. And in table 2, um, the column names are the same in both tables, but in, in table T2 uh, we've got 1, 2 and null. And now we're going to get started writing some some statements to see where we should use exists and understand this two valued logic so we're going to start off uh, with a, with a simple subquery so we're just going to select all from our table t1 uh, just hide the results screen to make this clearer so we're just going to select all from t1 and we're going to say where col1 in and if you're not familiar with the in and not in uh, there is another video on my channel that goes through those and I will put a link in the description below uh, and now I'm just going to select col1 from t2 and if we go ahead and look at that clearly we're not on to exist yet we're just looking at in um, so what we have here is a subquery uh, self-contained subquery so we can run this independently um, so that returns 1 2 and null and then we're saying where our column 1 value exists within those multiple values that have been returned so we get column 1 so we get sorry we get the values 1 and 2 so if I then change this to how we work with exists and exists is slightly different from in and not in. In and not in are based on three valued logic. And what that means is something can be true, false, or unknown. Whereas with exists, it can either be true or false. 
So let's go ahead and write out the equivalent with exists. So we don't reference a particular column here. So we're just going to say where exists. So we have a slight difference there between in and exists. Uh, and then we're going to say the same. We're going to say select col1 from dbot2. And if we go ahead and execute that query, we can see we get all values. So that's slightly different from in. And the reason that returns the three values is because what we're saying here is exists is just saying does something exist in the subquery? And in this case, we do have results. So that's a common way to fall down with exists. What we really need is a correlation between the outer query and the subquery to match the rows that we want because when we use exists in this way and there's not a correlation if some if this is a non-empty set that's returned if it if it returns any values at all everything from the outer query will be returned um, because all we're saying here is return all of the columns if anything whatsoever exists in this subquery and in this case it does so it's going to return all of the values so what we're going to do is add in a correlation. We're going to reference the outer query and the inner query. So we're going to alias these tables as the columns, the same name, and we're going to say where a col1 equals b col1, that the column names are exactly the same. And if we go ahead and have a look at the results here, remember when we didn't have the reference, we got the, the three values. We've got everything from T1 was returned. Now we've got the correlation between the two tables. We're going to go ahead and execute now, and we can see that that null value has been returned. Now the difficulty we have with correlated subqueries is we no, we no longer have the ability to run this independently because there's a reference to the outer query. Now, if we have a look at these two examples, we can see that looking at the syntax, in is a lot simpler to write than exists. Exists is a lot more verbose. We have to have the correlation between the outer query and the inner query. So why would we use exists? And a particular example comes in when working with nulls and we have we negate the logic so instead of in we change it to not in so if we change this example now to not in and go ahead and execute this query so we've now changed this to return all values from t1 where they don't exist in t2 if we go ahead and execute that we get a blank result set but if we actually break down this query, so if we have a look at the values, we know in, in, in our second table, table T2, we've got 1, 2, and 0. So we know 1 and 2 exist, and we have an unknown value there represented by 0. And then if we have a look at T1, we have 1, 2, and 3. So we would expect 3 to be returned, but it's not. It's returning a blank. And the reason for that is this, is it's saying that where a value doesn't equal a value must be true. So we know that we have, when we try and match, when we say one, so this is the value from table one, and this is the value from table two. We know that one doesn't equal one, is false so that sh that shouldn't be returned we know that 2 not in 2 is also false so we know that value shouldn't be returned now the interesting thing is where we get to 3 so when we're comparing 3 to a null what we actually end up with is unknown because that null value represents unknown 
what it means is that value could be 3 but we don't know if it is so we can't return it in that scenario and you'll see this a lot whenever you write a not in looking at a table with a null you are likely to get blank results because of that three valued logic because it can't determine whether they should be returned or not and this is what's important about the the two valued logic that exists in corporates so we'll go ahead and change this to not exists so we can have the same with not in not exists and we'll go ahead and have a look at this now so we were expecting the value 3 with not in we didn't get it but we did get it with not exists and the reason being is just saying that is this value in this value and if it's not that's true we don't we don't account for unknowns we're just saying is it there or not and that's where we need to look at using exists rather than not in and although it is uh, a bit more verbose we have to have the correlation between the outer query and the inner query uh, well we don't but we wouldn't get correct results then we can see the power of using exists and because exists only looks at two valued logic so it doesn't really care for nulls in some situations, particularly with a large amount of data, we can see slight performance increasing increases using exists as well. Another benefit of using exists over in or not in or is that we can have multiple references. So I'm going to move on to a new query here. So I'm going to create two tables, two small tables called employees and customers, and they're pretty much exactly the same. The employees table we have just contains an MPID, which is going to be a primary key, and I've set that to an identity, so it's going to auto-generate those values for us. Uh, then all we simply have is a first name, last name, and position. And then in terms of the customers, again, we have the customer ID, which is a primary key and identity, and then we have the first name and last name. I have purposely added in this extra column in employees um, to not to prevent me from being able to use the set operator except when comparing these. And I'm just going to insert some values. Uh, and looking at this, we can see we've got uh, Deirdre Walsh, who's a sales assistant, but she also exists as a customer. Lee Chen, who's a sales assistant, also exists as a customer. So we're going to go ahead and create those tables and insert some values. Now if we was to write this query with in, we couldn't actually write it because we need to compare two columns. Well we could actually write it but there's further manipulation we'd need to apply so we'd need to apply concatenation of these two values. However, exists already has that power built in. So if I want to select all from employees and I want to find out if those employees are also customers. Uh, I'm just going to alias that as E. So again, I say where exists. Uh, and then I put in my subquery, which is going to be it's all from DBO customers as C, where E dot first name equals C dot first name and E dot last name equals C dot last name so now we're actually comparing on multiple columns and that's as mentioned something we don't get with in or not in unless we apply uh, concatenation in this case but that that causes us further manipulation whereas in this case we don't need that manipulation we can reference and we can see how results there of Deirdre Walsh and Lee Chen uh, we don't need to apply that extra manipulation when working with exists uh, and again we can we can reverse the logic we can change that to not exists and run the query again and we get our other two uh, these are our employees that are not customers they haven't spent any money with us haven't placed any orders or don't exist in the customers table in this case it's a very simple example obviously 
we would have a lot more columns in both our customers and employees table uh, and the reason I couldn't use the set operator except which could be called upon in this scenario is because the column structure didn't exactly match uh, I could change it but in this case I want to return the employee position which doesn't exist in customers so to do that I'd first have to do the set operator comparison and then I'd have to do a join to bring back in that further column where I don't need to do that with exists. Uh, last point uh, about exists which is similar to in and not in and when working with with subqueries particularly in the in the where clause is we cannot actually return columns from this customers table um, because it's just being used as a comparator in this case uh, for, for comparison reasons so if I was to mention say if I wanted to return the customer ID and try and run that query I will get a, a common error to say that could not be pound, bound uh, so SQL Server couldn't find that column so in that case, if we want to return columns from both tables and run the comparison, we'd have to look at, at joins or potentially table expressions as well. Uh, another difference um, between exists and in and not in is we don't have to actually put a specific column here. Um, so commonly you will see select all, which everyone knows is is bad practice and shouldn't really be used or you might see uh, top one or or you might see a column itself and the interesting thing about exists is it doesn't actually matter what you put there because the database engine knows that you're not actually going to be returning any columns from here so it doesn't actually matter whether you select all or select top one or select a specific column it doesn't actually matter because the database engine will know I don't need to do anything with this anyway the bits where I do need the information is here and all I want to use this for is matching purposes I just want to say in my left output does it exist in my right output if it does return my left output I'm not actually doing anything with the sorry the right input should we say I'm not actually doing anything with that whereas if we look back to our original query with in we actually specify the column uh, and if we was to use select all there uh, we'll just change this back to in because we know that's expected results Uh, we do we do get returned values there as there is only one column within that table and if I was to add so now I've got two columns within that table and I try and run select all I will get the error only one expression can be specified in the selects list when the sub query is not introduced with exists so we would have to specify our actual column that we want to return and that's a, an interesting last point so in terms of in and not in so in the logic lies particularly with the column we're returning whereas exists really lies in what we're wanting to match on hope you have enjoyed that video if you have check out the other videos on my channel subscribe to the channel leave me details in the comments of what videos you would like to see or what you thought uh, hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.